That's right, Age of Mythology is getting a remaster under the title Age of Mythology Retold. With Age of Empires 1, 2, and 3 getting their remaster over the past few years and seeing success, Age of Mythology is finally getting its spot in the limelight with its new remastered edition. Age of Mythology has always been less popular than the other games of the series, but I think this game is seriously underrated, and I hope my fellow Age of Empires and other RTS gamers will give this game a chance. I mean, come on, who doesn't like fighting side by side with Ancient Greek Hoplites, Thor, and Cerberus all in the same game? In this video, I'm going to be going over what we know so far about the game, the changes to expect, as well as my predictions and what I'm most excited for. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into what we know so far about the game. Age of Mythology Retold now has a Steam page up, which shows its planned release date sometime in 2024, although an exact date is not specified, so I think it's safe to expect the actual release date to be sometime in fall of 2024. The game will be made using Age of Empire 3 Definitive Edition's version of the Bang Engine, and all units and animations will be completely redone. Its soundtrack will be a new fully symphonic version with some tweaks and modernizations that give players more options. The developers for this game are Forgotten Empires, World's Edge, Tantalus Media, Capture Age, and Virtuous Games. I do hope they will stay true to the original art style and general feel of the game given this new game engine and soundtrack, although given that Forgotten Empires is one of the developers, I think we can be pretty optimistic about this as they have a good track record staying true to the original games as we can see in the Age of Empires 2 remaster. The game will feature and improve all of the playable content up to and including Age of Mythology Tale of the Dragon expansion. So the nice thing about this is they're going to include all expansions on release in the base remaster version. And I would expect they'll also later release new expansions like they've done with the other remastered editions. If you're curious how this version of the game will compare to Age of Mythology Extended Edition, there's going to be some significant changes. One of the big changes that's happening is they are making the myth unit abilities now able to be activated by the player, which means myth units will no longer waste their ability if you don't want them to. I'm not sure how casuals will feel about this, as it's making the game lean more into micro and high APM gameplay, but I expect high level players will like this as it will make the game more skill based. I think the implementation of this will be similar to what you have in Warcraft 3, where you can toggle this so most people will just leave it on the autocast but the high level players can manually cast this to really optimize the gameplay. Another huge change they're making is that the population limit will be increased. I haven't seen any details around this as far as how much the population will increase or how this affects town centers, but in general I think most players will like this even if it shifts the meta a bit because it's just fun to have more units on map and I do think this is in keeping with the original game because I think the population limit back then was mainly a technical consideration and not designed specifically around the balance of the game. Another big change is related to god powers. These will now generally be multi-use with cooldowns. I think this is a pretty awesome addition as it will bring some of the god powers for Greek, Norse, and Egyptians in line with the Atlantean god powers who got this ability when the Titans expansion was introduced. The last massive change is that Titans will now be able to walk across water. I'll be very curious to see what this looks like animation-wise as I imagine part of their body will be underwater when walking through the water, so it should look pretty cool if a bit strange. The nice thing about this though is that it does make titans viable on maps like islands, whereas before they were pretty useless as they were just stuck on the one little island that you built them on. And also for all you role playing nerds, it'll be pretty cool to watch Cerberus walk across the river Styx. So those are really the biggest gameplay impacting changes I saw, and I'm generally pretty happy with them. Even though it does change the game quite a bit, I think it should make the game a lot more fun, especially being able to have more units on the map, being able to use the god powers more, and being able to control your myth unit abilities, which are some of the main draws to this game. Just to briefly mention some of the other changes if you're curious about all the balancing changes, there's also various units being buffed. Of note, Son of Osiris, Nidhogg, Colossus, Wadget, Scarab, Mummy, Behemoth, and Mountain Giants are all getting a buff in this new version of the game. To be honest, I'm not sure why Son of Osiris needed a buff. I'm guessing this is related to the new multi-use god power cooldowns, which will make some of these units slightly worse, especially if you get multiple Zeus bolts, you'll just be able to one-shot these guys, so maybe that fixes that issue. The rest of them I think generally all make sense, and hopefully that makes those myth units a little bit more viable. Kronos Manors will now also have the Temporal Scaffolding passive ability, which speeds up nearby construction. I'm also not quite sure what this ability is about, it feels like it will just make Kronos rush and the building time shift stronger, which seems unnecessary, but I guess we'll have to see how this works out when the game comes out. We can also expect some basic quality of life changes like hotkey buttons being displayed, more details about unit stats like armor, reload time, and attack multipliers, as well as improvements to unit movement for things like attack moving. There's also a new game mode coming with the release of the game called Arena of the Gods. I haven't seen too much info on what exactly this is, but it seems like it's going to be some type of single player and co-op survival mode. 
so I'll be interested to see how this mode turns out, and I'm hoping it's a new fun addition to the game. So those are pretty much all the major changes we know about right now for Age of Mythology Retold versus the Age of Mythology Extended Edition. I do also have some general predictions about the game, the first one being in the changes section there was one note about the scenario editor which makes it seem like the scenario editor might be available on release. I really hope that is the case as I think it will be a detriment to the game if it's not. However, given what we've seen with the other remasters, I wouldn't be surprised if the game releases and then the scenario editor follows in the next few months after release, like what happened with Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition. As far as my predicted release date, as of this recording, we're in the summer of 2024, so based on that and the fact that both Age of Empires 2 and 3 Definitive Editions were released in the fall season, I feel like there's a very good chance this game will also release in fall of 2024, so most likely October-November of this year. As far as balancing goes with the new multi-use god powers, I expect Atlanteans to be less strong than they were in the extended edition, which I think most people will be happy about. With the population changes, I'm not certain on how everything will shake out, but I do think for sure the strategies that relied on overloading your population limit to gain an advantage, such as Ragnarok and Atlantean hero units at max population, are definitely going to be weaker than they were before. And for my last prediction, it's that Age of Mythology will continue to be a niche game. Unfortunately, part of the reason of me making this video is to hopefully build some hype around it and get more people interested, as in the past it's definitely had the smallest player base in the Age of game series. So hopefully we can get some new people in and excited about the game and get a bigger active player base, which I think would be great for everyone. So what am I most excited about for in this game? It's gotta be the scenario editor and custom scenarios. I spent so many extra hours in this game because of all the cool campaigns and custom game modes that people created, and that's the case for Age of Empires games for me as well, but Age of Mythology has a special place in my heart in that regard, so I'm super excited to see what people create this time around. In particular, one of my favorite game modes is Food Wood Gold, which is basically this team-based game where you share resources between players, so I'm really hoping that's possible to do this time around, because that's my all-time favorite game mode in any game ever. I'm also excited about some of the balance changes they're making around the population cap and multi-use god power cooldowns. I think those will change the gameplay in a meaningful way, and they should make the game a lot more fun while still true to the original game, and make it fresh even for people who've been playing the game for a long time. All that being said, I hope you all are as excited as I am about playing Age of Mythology Retold on release. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe so I know to make more of this type of content. Please also share this video with other RTS fans so we can build some hype and get more people into this game so we can have some epic battles on release. And let me know in the comments what your favorite RTS game of all time is. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.